All right, everybody, we are back. Brand new Cabral Concept. Excited to share this scientific breakthrough with you. It just came out no more than six weeks ago, which is pretty exciting. So you're getting the latest and greatest. The name of the article is Light Stimulation of Mitochondria Reduces Blood Glucose Levels. It was published in the Journal of Biophotonics. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the red light that they used. We'll talk about how you can mimic, the, mimic this in nature from the sun or using red light based therapy. But let's get to actually what it did for people's blood glucose levels, also known as your blood sugar levels. I'm going to share with you the conclusion of the study, the abstract, but I'm also then going to break it down as to what does that mean in terms of light sources? When can you get it from nature? how much, and also what's going to do for your blood sugar level. So let's dive right in. Here's the abstract. This is what you want to take away from the study. But of course, if you actually want to go in and dig in deep in the study, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2981. I'll be linking up to the study and um, some great resources for you. Okay. So mitochondria regulate metabolism, but solar light, that means from the sun, solar light influences its rate. Photo, photo biomodulation, PBM, with red light of 670 nanometers, increases mitochondrial membrane potentials and adenosine triphosphate production and may increase glucose demand. Okay, what does all of that mean? Okay, here's all that it means. When red light penetrates the skin, touches the mitochondria, it can upregulate ATP. And ATP is energy that we use for essentially all natural processes, but especially those in activities that we do for, let's say, under 30 seconds, under 60 seconds, walking up a flight of stairs, let's say, putting out output, um, doing push ups, doing your workouts, like anything where ATP is needed, which is needed all day long, um, that is where this is useful. Now, when you increase ATP, you're increasing your need for glucose. If you increase your need for glucose, what it's going to do is burn off, or I shouldn't say burn off, it's gonna utilize more of the glucose, hopefully, that's in your bloodstream. So that's how it's going to bring down your blood sugar levels. That's the mechanism, at least the theorized mechanism of action. All right, so let's dive into it now. In this study, a glucose tolerance test that uh, photobiomodulation uh, of normal subjects significantly reduces blood sugar levels. Only a 15 minute exposure, that was it. 15 minute exposure to 670 nanometer light, I'll get into what that is, reduced the degree of blood glucose elevation following glucose intake by 27.7% when red light was used over two hours after the glucose challenge. So not for two hours, but somewhere within that two hour window for 15 minutes, that's it, all right? So what does that mean? Basically within one to two hours after you eat, get exposed to red light, it will help bring down or not allow blood sugar levels to get as high by about 30%, which is enormous, right? A blood sugar elevation. I'll talk about what elevation versus this next thing called glucose spiking means, because all of this is very important. Maximum glucose spiking was reduced by 7.5%. Doesn't sound like a big number, but it's huge, and I'll explain in just a moment. Consequently, red light exposure can be used to reduce blood glucose spikes following meals. This intervention may reduce damaging fluctuation of blood glucose on the body. And what that means is it can help with the eyes, it can help with the kidneys, it can help with vascular damage, and so much more that can happen from high blood sugar or maybe even moving into uh, type 2 diabetes, et cetera. All right, so this is really powerful. What does all of this mean? It, they said a number of things. I explained a little bit about the mitochondria, the mechanism of action, how it's going to draw more or use more sugar that's in your bloodstream, so it's not going to allow that spike to get as high. Uh, it can reduce something called blood glucose elevation by 27.7%. All right, so what does that mean? Like, what's this blood glucose elevation versus blood glucose spike, which was 7.5%? All right, so the degree of blood glucose elevation, it's a measure for how much glucose levels increase from baseline. What does that mean? Well, let's say before a meal, your blood sugar was at 80, okay? And then after you eat, it was 130. So it went a, up by 50 points, all right? So that's your blood glucose elevation. From 80 to 130, it goes up by 50 points. Well, if you reduce that by almost 30%, let's do easy math on a podcast, then 
uh, the difference of 30% on 50 points is 15. So instead of your blood sugar going from 80 to 130, uh, with that being the 50 points, it would instead go to 115, right? On average, we're just saying. So now it goes from 80 to 115. That's dramatically different than 130. Or what would be even more important, if someone's blood glucose usually gets to 150, all right, that's a 70-point delta between the two. That's 17 times uh, 3. 21 points. So now instead of going 150, it only goes to what? About 130, 131. That's that's pretty remarkable. Or 129, 130, right around there. So this is, that's, again, that, there's nothing really like that just from nature itself. And so I'm going to get into uh, a little bit more in this. Now, can you use nutritional supplements? Can you use uh, pharmaceuticals? Of course. That's one not. That's not what today's show is about. Obviously, you know about the pharmaceuticals, metformin, etc. Not as many people know about the natural blood sugar balancers. I'll try to link those up with things like vanadium or vanadyl sulfate, uh, cinnamon. Uh, there's all sorts of different things that I could go through, of course, uh, that zinc picolinate that are important for blood sugar. And they do work. They're great. But no one says that you only need to use one, right? We can be integrative and we can use all of these things, which I think is dramatically important considering how important keeping blood sugar balanced is. Okay, so now what's maximum glucose spiking? Maximum glucose spiking is the highest point that your glucose reaches. All right, so let's go back to the 150 example. Let's just make this easier. All right. So 150, and I don't have my phone on me uh, right now for my trusty calculator, but we're just going to go 150 and we're just going to multiply that by 7.5%, right? Because that's the highest that it's going to reach. So that's going to be less than, it's going to essentially lower that 150 by 11.25 points, right? Because 10% would be 15, 7.5% is 11.25. So now it's bringing that down to, what's that, uh, 140 or 138.75, is that correct? I don't know if that's correct. Just again, doing math and speaking is not my strong point. There we go, 138.75. So at the same time, is it not allowing glucose to be as high? There's another metric, which is your highest peak. And you want that. That's important because if you've ever used a continuous glucose monitor or tested your blood sugar, you don't really want to peak out above 140 or so uh, after a meal. So when we look at that. If you're typically peaking out at 150, this is going to help you bring it down to about 138. So I think these types of studies are fantastic. So now let's get into I always on the Cabral concept, I always want to give you the action plan as well. So how can you mimic this? How can you get it from nature? So I said, okay, well, is the 670 nanometers of red light, because it's red light essentially coming from the sun. Now that's available all day long, right? But when is it strongest? Like when's it going to have the most potential to help you? And I didn't know that answer. And so I love to research, I love to read. And so I went in and I said, okay, when would you actually get the most benefit? When would the sun be strong enough and that you'd be able to get this benefit. Okay, so two things. One is you'd actually have to have skin exposure. So this means that you'd have to have close to full body exposure, meaning you in a bathing suit, when the sun produces its largest amount of red light that is absorbable to humans. And that is this. Near sunrise and sunset, the sun passes or the sunlight passes through a thicker layer of the Earth's atmosphere. And what this does is it blocks or scatters more of these shorter wavelengths, which are more of the blue and the green. And this then allows for the longer wavelengths, which is going to be the red, to hit your body and for you to be able to absorb it. So one, we can't have a lot of clouds in the sky, right? And it's going to be closer to sunrise and sunset. So we'll say an hour or two after sunrise, an hour or two before sunset. So you might say, well, okay, that's great. That's going to help me. Uh, maybe, again, if you live in New England area, you're not going to be able to do this during the winter months. You're just not going to be able to. And I don't know if you're going to be in a bathing suit, right, during the uh, even fall or early spring season. Probably not. But having said that, one of my big recommendations just about a week ago was the most important time to go for a walk, and I gave you all the stats behind it, was after dinner. If you missed that show, we're going to link it up today at stephencabral.com slash 2981. But it literally gives you all the different breakdown for blood sugar and so important. That was 2966 was that number of that show. Wow, it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was already. All right, 
So here's what you can do. And again, I know some people like to get it all from nature, and I think that that's amazing. But you have to keep in mind, I'm not sure that humans were ever meant to live in New England, right? Because if we didn't have shelter, if we didn't have all of these warm clothes, if we just literally had what we were born with, uh, which we did for millions of years, it would have been difficult to survive with nothing growing uh, in the cold weather, nearly impossible. But that's neither here nor there. We're very fortunate to be able to live essentially wherever we want now. Now we're not going to get that red light. Okay, so now how do we do that? There's two ways. There's low level laser therapy that sometimes you can get one of those little uh, low level laser therapy, for lack of a better term, guns that you can use at home and you can point it. So photobiomodulation, you can point it directly at, let's say, a sore joint, an inflamed area of the body, and it can help to reduce pain, reduce inflammation, et cetera. Again, now that I said that, I can't give you, I have to give you my disclaimer. I can't provide you with medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis, but really important and really great for repairing tissue damage. So you can do that typically um, at some naturopathic doctor's offices, some chiropractors, et cetera. Okay. But then there's an easier way, which is the optoelectronics and the photonics that most of us have heard about by now, which is red light based therapy using light emitting diodes. Or in the case of the Thera um, that I'm going to talk to you about is a triode and just basically three instead of two LED lights. So these are laser diodes that actually produce red light, the same wavelengths that we would get from the sun, but just concentrated red light instead of blue light or green light, etc. So these can be then kept very close to the body and you can get that effect on the mitochondria. So the way that you, you would use them is following a meal that may spike your blood sugar levels, you can expose yourself for 15 minutes to one of these red light based therapies. Honestly, it's as simple as that. We don't have to always make things as complex. There's a bunch of different great companies out there. You can, of course, choose the one that you like. One of the ones uh, that I use, or, or a, a, I actually have a bunch of them, because again, I don't like to necessarily play favorites. There's at stephencabral.com slash resources. So you see one that I use for the face. You'll see one that I use inside of the sauna. Um, and then those are the two main ones that I use. Okay, so that one's by Therisage, one's by Higher Dose. I'll link those up for you. And whenever possible, we always try to get our uh, community a discount of at least typically 10 to 20%. All right, so that is that. Those are the big things that you need to know. Now you know that you can lower glucose levels by 27.7% and a peak of by 7.5% by 15 minutes of red light exposure within an hour or two hours after you eat. I recommend within one hour if possible. That will help the potential spike, but anywhere up to two hours works because what happens is your body's continuing to release um, sugar, glucose, into the bloodstream for a couple hours post meal. All right, everybody. Hopefully this was helpful. All of the science, all of the research, all of the resources and links will be at stephencabral.com slash 2981. Take care and I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.